Good morning and welcome to Rising. We've got a great show for you today. Robbie, what do we have? Well, Julia Manchester and Philip Wegman are with us to discuss the swearing in of Virginia's new governor, Glenn Youngkin. And Bacha Ungar Sargan joins us to break down what we know so far about the Texas synagogue hostage situation. The Biden administration is looking to regroup on its handling of COVID-19 following the Supreme Court's ruling to put a halt on a sweeping vax or test mandate for large employers. Just yesterday, a new CBS News and YouGov poll found that Americans feel worse about the pandemic and economy than last year, and Biden's ratings are continuing to sink. Those surveyed said they feel frustrated and disappointed that Democrats aren't focused enough on inflation and the economy. Meanwhile, President Biden's website uh, to distribute half a billion rapid tests will go live this week. Tests will take 7 to 12 days to ship and are limited to four per household, according to the White House. My colleague Zach Weissmuller over at Reason Magazine tweeted in response, quote, Just to be clear, the federal government's solution here was to buy up the existing supply of tests, making them impossible for consumers to acquire on their own, create a website, and slowly distribute them for free. It's not the best plan. I don't like you could just give if your problem is people don't have enough money to give to get the tests. I just mail people more checks or something. Right. The, the well, people are complaining about inflation. Yeah. And so then Manchin doesn't want to send any more checks. <laughs> so but, that's not going to happen. So I, th I think they could have avoided this by working backwards from what their number one priority was, which was covid. Okay, the thing that's going to make or break the Biden White House. Absolutely, COVID. COVID. It's the pandemic, stupid. Right, exactly. And so then from there, you think, okay, what are the potential problems that could come, come about? Because they did a very good job rolling out the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, that was effective. Everybody could get one within a couple weeks. But then what's the problem? Well, a problem could be that it mutates and can completely break through the vaccine. Like, that was something that people were nervous about from the very beginning. We didn't get that, but what we did get is something that is pretty good at breaking through the vaccine. Not, not, not to hospitalize or kill you if you're vaccinated, but to break through and give you a case and make you potentially contagious for, for a day or two. And if that's a, a risk, like a very likely risk that you're facing, then you work backwards, okay, what, what can we do? Well, let's make sure that everyone has tests. And so if they'd have done this six months ago, and then it takes seven to 12 days for you to get your test. Everyone would have just, because we're Americans. You just have a stack of them we to hoard, make, right. Yeah, we yeah. go get our four, <laughs> and everybody would have you four. You have auto delivery. More, yes. more paper towel shows yes. up yes. at my apartment than I need in any given month. Yes, and, and more tests. Uh, and then if there was a paper towel shortage, you'd be able to share with your neighbors. Right. So if everybody had four tests and a, a household needed four tests, they wouldn't have to go to the site at that point. They could just ask their neighbor, hey, can I borrow yours? I've got mine coming. Right. And that's what I mean. We yeah. had extra tests because, well, as I said on the show, my wife had it. I've already had it. We're done with it now. So we gave the test to people who, right. who you know, were gonna were, need thought they were thought they might be feeling ill. <laughs> right. So that would have been so if they'd have done that six months ago. Yeah. And then I, some of them I were probably worried about a headline that would have said in the AP, uh, you know, Biden administration wasted one billion dollars on 500 million tests that were never needed. Right. But you know what? If they weren't needed, everybody's so happy. Right, right. That nobody's going to care about that right. billion dollars that you spent. Let's let the test. Yeah, if that was like, the gamble they made, it was the wrong one. Right. In fact, no, we need that billion yeah. dollars of tests yeah. to. Although even that is not going to, like, that is not a silver bullet either. No, I, obviously, not, not, more not testing would be great. But, but it's, I think it's something that people can put their anger on. Yeah. It's like a locus for it. Like, I think they recognize, right? Because you're right. It's not going to solve the no. crisis. It's not going to get us out of it. It can improve things, but it's something to be upset about because it feels useless to be upset at the virus, like getting upset at the, the, virus, at doesn't the virus, virus doesn't care. The virus doesn't have care. feelings. The virus, the virus is not watching the, its poll numbers. It doesn't no. care. But Biden is watching his poll yeah. numbers, and you can be angry at him. It is remarkable, though, that they didn't have more of a plan to. I mean, they had. I, I feel it feels like the Biden administration just expected that they were going to benefit from good luck. The, the, they were coming into office as the vaccines were were right. heading out to the people. Alpha, and we alpha had, was crashing. We had, yes, then Alpha was crashing. It was good times. We're here again. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, we were going to celebrate uh, our second- Roaring 20s. Our, right, our second <laughs> first Independence Day. Everything was great. Specter of Trump defeated, you know, and, and no. The no. pandemic was not done with us, and they, they didn't have more of a plan. Oh, oh, well, what are we supposed to do? Like, there's nothing. 
They, they, didn't, right. they didn't think through something else that they might have to do. And I think they were very invested in the culture, their side of the culture war. I think they were so frustrated at the massive uptick in vaccine resistance mm -hmm. that they really dug in on that. And they're like, Let, let's pound away at, at, at uh, these rubes who won't get, get their jab. They're the, they're the thing that's standing in the way of us ending this. Rather than saying, OK, we've done everything we can. The science is out there. The vaccines are free and available. What else do we need to do? But, and they, it does feel like they really got kind of stuck in a wrestling match with the anti-vax folks. Yeah, which, only, which then made the anti-vax folks even more military, or, or it, it created yeah. more buy-in on the right or right-wing media to, to give voice to the unvaccinated or to you know, speak to their issue or to, to talk in language that courts them because there's only two sides and everything has to be one side or the other. So if Biden has made the unvaccinated his enemies, then conservatives must adopt right. the unvaccinated into their coalition. Those, those must be our friends. Which is not good. Right. And, you know, the, the, in the black community, there was a lot of vaccine resistance very early on. And the, a, an opposite approach was taken. It was, it was not a hostile uh, assault on people for not right. up, taking up the vaccine. And that resistance faded as people talked to their friends who'd been vaccinated yeah. and talked to people that they trusted who'd been vaccinated and studied it. And, and people made their own decisions. And now, you know, the, the vaccine uptake in the black community, white community is about the same. It might even be higher, actually, in the black community because of the, some of the concentrated resistance in the white community. Right. We're, we're that's a great contrast with the, you know, the liberal sneering at right. and stigmatizing and, and almost outright criminalizing lack of vaccine status that you, yeah. well, you shouldn't be able to ride public transportation or go out of your house or travel across states or hold a job or set foot in a school or do, it's, it's, it's very othering and very hostile. And I, so I'll talk more about this in my radar, the kind of argument for the vaccine mandate, which was halted by the Supreme Court. But I, I just think it's, I think it's, not a, I think it's neither a right approach or justifiable right. at this point. And liberals always say follow the science. The social science on persuasion is very clear. Mm -hmm. Like just badgering somebody and beating them over the head with fact after fact after fact is shown to not only not persuade somebody, but convince them that their position is, is even truer than they originally believed. Like you, people dig in when you come after them like that. Uh, and so it was not it was never going to work, but it was emotionally satisfying. Well, and the administration deprived itself. It threw away one of what I thought was the most persuasive tool for getting pe vaccine skeptical people to get the vaccine, which is once you get it, you're done. Then you can behave as normally again. We won't make you right. mask and socially distance and we won't <clears throat> randomly shut things down and all that. And they threw that away. They specifically started saying, we want you to get vaccinated. And then we, we would actually like you to wear a stronger mask now. Right. We're, done, we're done with those weak masks. Even more of a mask, please. And then I think a lot of people said to hell with it. Right. What's, right. what's, what's the point? If, what's the point? Because yeah. a lot of people just wanted to get out of this. They might have been willing to do the shot. But then it was like, well, you're going to have to do everything again. And we actually want you to get more shots later, too. And it's, not a, yeah. it's just not a winning. It's clearly not a winning message for a, a p portion of the population. And, uh, and I don't know, we'll see. But ho hopefully, you know, the situation is getting better. Right. We think we're, s we're on the other side uh, or we're getting there, or at least we in DC, New York, et cetera, the rest of the country might have a little ways to go right. still, but, um, but om the Omicron wave will crest. And then hopefully we are finally, maybe, though we've said it before, done with this thing. And then what are we gonna talk about? <laughs> then what are we gonna talk about? <laughs> Right. This is our perverse incentive. Like the cable news incentive is, right. is like Trump needs to be back. We need right. Trump. We need this pandemic. Yeah, we don't need Trump. But we I, I, I do like complaining about COVID restrictions. So, <laughs> no, I would be happy to put myself out of a job in that sense and not have anything to complain about. Trust me. Patriotic, as always. <laughs> anyway, we'll tell you what's on our radars up next.